Okay, so I'm going to be showing an end-to-end -end example using the custom logic configurator in Atmel Start. Uh, what we're going to do here is use case we have two buttons on the 80 tiny 817 xplan pro and we'd like to turn the led on only when both are pressed so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to build up a truth table from the schematic on um, how to do this it's not quite as simple as an and gate but we'll show you why uh, we'll be able to also demonstrate various logic input methods used in the custom logic screen standard logic gates and or nand etc entering a a standard hex value representing the logical output required and custom truth table completion using the event system as a logical input and we'll also show you how to do that so this is what we're going to build up but we're going to show you from scratch from Atmel studio you'll notice that we have um, direct links to both the user guide and the schematics of the kits I'm just going to download each of these documents here I have user LED, user LED is the LED, user button happens to be switch zero. And on switch zero, we can see that we have, um, we need pull-ups. And if we push the switch in, it's gonna be logic zero. Um, with the other button, we can see that there is a pull-up on the pin. And um, so we don't need a pull-up. The LED is going to be a digital output and we can see that if we pull the pin low it's going to turn the LED on so those are the three pins we're going to be working with into Atmel start create a new project logic digital glue logic as our requirement want to work on the kit we have so we can type 817 and we can each select the X plan pro so coming in straight we have a low level view of the digital logic configuration here different output signals but we're going to go straight into the custom logic configurator we enable the custom logic so our one switch input was pc5 and we see that there's one possible connection here to look up table one um, we see that pb4 is our LED and that connects to lookup table zero. So here you can see that we have a slight limitation is that we haven't laid out our board specifically for the IO pins that we have available connected to us. Um, that would typically be the case if we laid out our own board. However, we can add a software component, the event system, and going to the event system, the switch was on PB5. So an asynchronous event from PB5 is what we need. Now we wanted this on lookup table one because that's what we used with the other one. So we can use um, input B on lookup table one. And now if we come back to the custom logic, we have a lookup table event here. So we are able to drop that on to one of the inputs. So now we can take the combination of signals that we're interested in and then fill out the truth table to ensure that the LED is off for all other potential combinations of inputs. Enabling the lookup, we can see we don't quite get the same logic table that we need. So we can try the next one. And you can see that this happens to match the truth table that we were looking for, 0111. So going back to custom, It'll keep the same value here. We can also try and input an expression. So we know that OR works, but for instance, if we just want to A star B, and so it's A star C, and you can see that that is the same as the AND. And if we wanted to get back to the OR, we can use the PLUS and you can see that that matches the expression that we had before. Alternatively, a value, you can see that that's 32. Um, if we had two, for instance, it should be just the second value, which is out. So we can have 32 again. And um, so there's the different types of input. Um, let's go back to OR. It's an easy thing for us to understand. Let's move the one logic around to the other truth table. Now, just clicking the settings here, notice that we need to enable the output from one box to the other. Um, that's the lookup table control and the output enable 
enables one, the pin configuration of the IO port is overwritten. So this is what we're wanting to do. Now just enabling lookup table zero. And all we want to do is pass this value through. We have an, uh, an AND will actually do it, an OR will do it, um, as you can see, because it's pretty simple value. Uh, just to emphasize with custom, the value is four on the output. So um, just leaving it like that, we have the output there. Um, in the pin mics, we can show just um, the component signals, um, turn everything else off. You can see the lookup at table two in. This is the switch one, and that was a digital input, and we don't need a pull up. PB4 was our LED, LED, and this is a digital output, initial level high, so we don't turn this on by default. And then if we have SW0, and this is an input, and we wanted the pull up. Okay, so we should have done everything we need to do. This is a core independent application, so there's nothing else happening here. So let us export the project. Download the pack, drag and drop, create the project, just select the kit. Note that the serial number is 57, so we just select the same one and start without debugging. Just note, as I begin to run this project, that there is no application code besides initialization. So you can see that the different peripherals, uh, the event system, digital glue logic, etc., all initialized, but in main, we have no code running. And now, if you can see my kit, a single button doesn't turn the LED on, but pushing both buttons works as expected.